Hi, I'm Rob Shore, Director of Product Marketing for Corient. In this video, what I want to do is take a little bit of a closer look at traffic pattern. If we understand the traffic patterns in these transport networks a bit better, it can enable us to build more efficient solutions. And what we'll see is that each different part of the network has a variety of different types of traffic patterns uh, that will each benefit uh, from a different type of solution. So let's jump into it. What you can do is take a, a transport network and really break it into two halves. You have the long haul network that interconnects these large hub locations, these major metropolitan cities from one another. Uh, and you have the metro network, the network that connects the subscriber uh, to the service provider, where the service provider does most of their traffic management for those subscribers. And what we can see is it's, it's nice to break the network up like this because there's a nice delineation point in the network here, right, between these two halves of the transport network where service providers build these big hub locations to do all of their traffic management. So when traffic comes in from the metro, from these subscribers, it will almost always stop at this hub location where that service provider will manage those customers. Uh, it'll serve a lot of the content perhaps, maybe send some of that traffic back into the metro network, uh, and then aggregate it all before sending it into the long haul. So again, this is a place in the network where traffic almost always stops before transitioning into the other part of the network. And what we'll also see is that the traffic patterns on each half of that line are very, very different uh, and will each benefit from a pretty significantly different type of solution. So let's look at core networks first. Uh, like I said, core networks interconnect these major metropolitan areas with one another, these big hub locations with one another, uh, and what you have is now a very mesh type traffic pattern, right? So each one of these hub locations, uh, it really needs to talk to every one of the other hub locations. And because it's aggregating all the traffic from that metropolitan area, you're also generally dealing with large amounts of bandwidth. So finally, uh, because you're connecting these large cities from one another, these networks often span very, very large distances, continental networks, uh, uh, entire nationwide networks. So you have a lot of distances, thousands of kilometers in many, many instances between these locations. So we've got high bandwidth, uh, we've got mesh traffic pattern, and we've got large distances. So the type of solution that you want for these types of networks is really going to focus on two primary characteristics. The first one is high performance. Right? Because I have these really long distances that I have to go with my services, uh, I want uh, solutions that can cover those distances either without any regeneration or minimizing the amount of regeneration. Because if I have to regenerate those signals uh, in the center of this path, it can really pretty significantly increase the cost of the network. Right? It's extra lasers I've got to buy uh, in the center here. So what you want is solutions that can get those signals from one point to the other point without having to regenerate. And this is more than just the lasers and the receivers. Uh, there's a whole lot of different features that go into this, including the amplifier, amplifier performance, uh, the way you manage power across the network. There's a whole host of different features. Uh, but the net of it uh, is a solution that will provide connectivity without regeneration. So, so that's the first thing you're looking for in these long haul type core networks. The second thing is something called spectral efficiency. And if you think about it, I've got these connections between these hub locations uh, that are going over very large distances. And those connections are pretty expensive. And it's not just the cost of the fiber itself, it's also all the amplifiers that I'm going to need along the path here. And remember, even for amplifiers, it's not just the equipment itself. It's the space to put that amplifier. I've got to maintain and manage that amplifier. So the idea is when I light up these fibers, it's very expensive. I want to ensure that I'm maximizing my use of that resource. And that's what spectral efficiency is all about. It's getting the most out of the spectrum uh, that I'm transmitting into that fiber. And I can maximize that efficiency, maximize that spectral efficiency two ways. I can either just add more wavelengths, right, increase my channel count, and that includes things like super channels, or I can also increase the uh, amount of uh, the capacity of each individual wavelength, right, 100 gig wavelengths, 200, 400 terabit wavelengths. So this is the kind of solution I'm looking for in core networks, high performance uh, and very strong spectral efficiency. But that's for core networks, and, and really for core networks, pretty much there's one type of traffic flow and, and one type of solution that really will handle virtually all types of uh, core networks. What we'll see in the metro is it's a little bit more diverse. There's a, a few different types of traffic patterns in metro networks, and each of those different types of traffic pattern uh, will benefit from a different type of solution. So let's take a look first at the most common type of traffic pattern in the metro network, consumer services, right? These are the services that actually go out to the end customer from the service provider. Now these networks to support these types of services, they're very generally hub and spoke configurations. So I've got very centralized locations where my content is, and I need to deliver that content out to 
these end subscribers. Now, these networks often have a huge amount of bandwidth, but because that bandwidth is spread out over a huge number of destinations, the actual amount of bandwidth required for any individual destination is usually not that significant. So this is a network that will really uh, benefit uh, from a solution that's really 10 gig centric, right? that handles 10 gig uh, transport very efficiently because I need to deliver that smaller amount of bandwidth to each of the individual locations. On top of that, because I have so many locations that I need to, uh, just to place equipment, the upfront, the startup cost uh, for these solutions will also be significant. Right? You want a, a solution that's very cost effective uh, for small amounts of bandwidth. So 10 gig centric, low upfront cost, but you also want a solution that can manage traffic very granularly. Again, I'm dealing with smaller amounts of traffic to each destination, and it's also going to be very bursty, right, where I have big spikes of bandwidth requirements to each of these destinations, and I want to be able to handle those spikes uh, very efficiently uh, as I'm distributing that traffic. Okay? So that's the kind of solution that really fits for these consumer services. The next type of service I want to look at is something called private line services. What these are, are services that are interconnect major enterprise customer locations. Right? Now, these are often very expensive services, they're often high bandwidth, they have very strong performance, and it becomes dedicated bandwidth in the network for that customer. Okay? So again, it's really only larger enterprise type customers that buy these types of services, you know, big banking institutions, uh, healthcare, education. They're also, they're also the most difficult type of service to support, right, to provide, because one of the things this requires is a very diverse infrastructure. Each of these services, they can connect any locations inside this metro area. So it can connect from any location to any other location, and I need the infrastructure to support that. So that's really the first thing required. It's why a lot, uh, there's really not that many service providers uh, that provide a diverse set of private line uh, services. So that's one, is this diverse infrastructure. The second thing that solutions for this type of service are going to require uh, is flexibility in the end interface type. These customers could require virtually any type of service. Uh, SAN services, fiber channel, those kinds of stuff, really to virtually any kind of service. So you need a solution that's going to have flexibility uh, on how you provision the endpoints. And those are really the two key characteristics for this type of solution, flexible connectivity and flexibility on the uh, endpoint service type. So that covers private line services. The next type of service is an interesting one. If you've seen some of my other videos, uh, one called the, the data center effect, that's what this new service is. It's a new type of infrastructure, a new type of service that these networks need to support. I call it the new metro core. And essentially interconnecting all of these data centers. As these data centers propagate themselves into the metro networks, a new network needs to spring up to support this kind of connectivity, both between the data centers, from the service provider to the data center, and from the enterprise customer into the data center. And what we'll see from a traffic pattern perspective is this looks very much like core network traffic patterns. You have a relatively a fewer number of larger hub locations and a mesh of traffic pattern, but you don't have the distance concerns that you have in the long haul networks. So the type of solutions that you'll see that are effective for this type of network, uh, yeah, they'll share the same kind of spectral efficiency uh, and high bandwidth requirements that you get from the core network, the long haul network, uh, but you don't now have the performance concerns that you had in the long haul. So this is going to be a part of the network uh, that will benefit from solutions that are much more cost optimized. Yeah, they provide high bandwidth, but I can sacrifice that performance to get a better price. So this is the idea, right? You've got all these different types of traffic patterns in the different parts of the network, and each one benefits from a different type of solution. Right? So it's for this reason that understanding exactly where in the network you're operating in and the kind of service that you're looking to support will help guide you in to determine what the right and optimal uh, transport solution is uh, for that service. Okay? So hopefully this all makes sense uh, and the nature of the different traffic flows and solutions makes sense. If you want to see some of Corient's solutions uh, for these different traffic flows, uh, please visit us at Corient.com. And I hope you found this session interesting and thank you for watching.